Good evening. Welcome to the meeting of the Skokie Village Board for Tuesday, May the 22nd, 2018. This evening we have a very enthusiastic group of brownies, Troop 42-163, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ladies, it's all yours. Will the audience please rise? Color guide, post the colors. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Color Guard Retreat. Color Guard Dismissed. That was one of the best performances I think we've ever had. Congratulations. Congratulations and thank you. Meeting will come to order and the Clerk will please call the roll. Sylvia? Trustee Roberts? Here. Trustee Sutker? Here. Trustee Albert? Here. Trustee Bromberg? Here. Trustee Klein? Here. Trustee Greg Keeler? Here. And Mayor Van Dusen? Here. And I would point out for the record that Deputy Clerk Luke uh, is filling in for our Clerk Promote Shaw for the evening. Next item on the agenda is approval of the consent agenda for the meeting. A motion is in order. Trustee Sucker, seconded by Trustee Ulrich. Is there anything on the consent agenda anybody would like to have removed? If not, I'll call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Ulrich? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Trustee Greg Keeler? Aye. May Van Dusen? Aye. The motion passes. Uh, this evening, it gives me a uh, very special pleasure to introduce a uh, guest, a young lady. She's in the seventh grade at East Prairie, Amelia Emmy Dobek. Amelia won the Generation Beyond Award. Very impressive. She came in first out of 600. And... It was uh, done by Lockheed uh, Martin, and it was on the Mars Habitat, if I remember correctly. Uh, and w what we would like to do is to briefly show a YouTube, and I believe Andrea Smitten is with us this evening as well. <laughs> Uh, Andrea is the Director of Enrichment at East Prairie, and so perhaps you could just do a little introduction for us, if you don't mind. Thank you. If you take the microphone, we need to do this so we can record it for the record. I feel like the brownies. <laughs> How do you do? Thank you for having us. I'm Andrea Smeaton. I'm the Enrichment Coordinator at East Prairie, District 73 in Skokie and I am thrilled that our district um, provides us with time to give the enrichment kids um, opportunities for study, for independent study. And so each of them choose an area of study 
and Emmys was space, anything science, kind of, really, but space. And I found this competition, and I said, would you like to try it? And she said, sure. And off she went. And for, I think it was about three months, she researched in school and out of school, prepared this project, did her film that you'll see, and, and was extraordinary. And we're very proud of her, very oh, proud of her. Incredible. And thrilled incredible. that we have the opportunity to give this chance to our students, to all of our students. And um, Emmy's mother is here as well. And so if you would stand as well and be recognized, you <laughs> certainly did. Certainly account for it. And that's the proud father. Yes. yes. <laughs> I, mean, I had the opportunity to uh, meet Mrs. Dobeck. I haven't had a chance to meet Mr. Dobeck, but uh, Mrs. Dobeck's enthusiasm was infectious, uh, as you can imagine. She's very proud of Emmy. Uh, so why don't we take a look at the uh, video? My name is Amelia Dobeck, and this is my Generations Beyond Conscious Energy video. My design will ensure the safety of the astronauts, but also make sure their comfort is out of this world. When traveling to Mars, supplies will need to be abundant. I've solved this problem with the MSS, or Mars Storage Station, which will also include my self-growing farm. The MSS will be in the sun's gravitational pull. In order to maintain the orbit around the sun, an object must be going at the same speed it is being pulled towards the sun. In this case, 60,489.5 miles per hour. It will achieve this speed using the same maneuvering module as the ISS. My spacecraft will be called the Adventurer. Astronauts will dock into it from the ISS and fly to the MSS to replenish their supplies. From the MSS, astronauts will fly to Mars. The astronauts will also redock on their way to Earth. Our cargo ship beforehand will be dropping needed supplies such as compressed oxygen. The adventure will be run on the most abundant element in the universe, hydrogen fuel. Astronauts can filter it from space. Hydrogen fuel emits water. And using electrolysis, we can separate the water into hydrogen for fuel and oxygen for air. It will also provide source of water along with the filtration system. This is my growing module, also known as the SGF, or self-growing farm. We'll be growing plants such as lettuce and mizuna. After the seeds are planted, the belt will be moving slowly each week for around eight weeks. Since there is little gravity in space, the water and fertilizer will be put into the soil by pipes. Then after the plant is fully grown, it will be automatically be cut, cleaned, and frozen. Then the soil will be aerated and reused for the next cycle. This is where the frozen plant storage will be. Due to gravity, Astronauts will lose bone mineral density and their cardiovascular system will weaken, so daily activity is needed. In the adventure, there will be a simulator in which they will be able to choose their exercise machine and what environment they are exercising in. The simulator also includes leisure activities such as skiing and kayaking. Their rooms will have circular ceilings and there they will be able to watch downloaded shows and even see places on Earth such as their home. Thanks for watching and see you on the journey to Mars. Well, SpaceX may have Elon Musk, but we've got Emmy Dobeck, and I'll take Emmy. Emmy, would you like to say a few words? Oh, excuse me? Would you like to say a few words? Um, yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the project, it took a lot of effort into it, and it had a lot of research, but I want to kind of let everyone out there know that it was really worth it, and whatever we do and I think we should put the best effort into it and a little bit about the generation beyond so Lockheed Martin they want to inspire young minds to do incredible things and then they also think that uh, kids can have extraordinary imaginations so they want um, to kind of put kids into that field of science and engineering so they come up with this contest and the first year was last year and they kind of want it, and it was a huge success, so they wanted to continue it, and they also have a lot of different experiences and programs that for generation beyond, yeah. Well, congratulations. You've done not only East Prairie proud, but you've done Skokie proud. Thank you. You put us on the map, and now the pressure's on. We expect that you're going to become either an astronaut or you're going to become an engineer at NASA or maybe SpaceX. Maybe you'll take Elon Musk's place. <laughs> but congratulations. I Thank might you. point out that there was also a 
money prize. I hope there's nobody here from the IRS. Uh, <laughs> but Emmy won, I believe, $10,000. Is yes. that correct? Very yes. really impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. I got a couple questions. Um, the 600 from where, from schools, from where? Uh, like, they were uh, all Atlanta? across the country. Oh, so wow. It was out there for anyone who wanted to be sixth through eighth grade. So you had to qualify by just entering and they pick 600 and then from there they pick? Uh, the no, it was 600 total. So then, then um, they viewed it from there and then chose which ones mm -hmm. were the best and then from there they made it minimized and the winners and then the second and third place winners. Interesting. Yeah. I think if there was a quiz I'd probably fail on that. <laughs> and I'm not surprised with Miss Meaton being your teacher because she did a wonderful job all the time with my son and just yeah. an incredible person. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Emmy, and congratulations again, and congratulations to your parents. They, uh, they've done a great job. I know you're very proud, and we're all very proud as well. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And in that vein, not quite on Mars, but a little closer to home, uh, this evening we have the Block Party of the Year Awards. And this year, uh, Karen Lisa Sherman, who is a commissioner on the Human Relations Commission, and Beth Lindley, di the director of our Human Services Department, will make the presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Trustees. Convened to assure fair housing rights for residents in Skokie, the Human Relations Commission has planned and promoted programs and activities throughout the Skokie community which cultivate understanding and respect between residents regardless of racial, religious, and ethnic backgrounds. The Human Relations Commission has long promoted na neighborhood block parties which provide an opportunity for neighbors to meet each other, sometimes for the first time, to share food and fun. While we thoroughly enjoyed reviewing all 13 award submissions, there were four gatherings that demonstrated not only a lot of food and fun, but collaboration and genuine respect and concern for each other. I would like to welcome representatives of the four Block Party Award winners and to introduce Karen Sherman, representative of the Human Relations Commission, who will share highlights from these wonderful gatherings. As we announce each celebration, we would like to ask a representative from each block to come forward and receive a certificate from the commission as a promise of the sign which will be installed on your block by our very own Public Works Department. Okay, now I have to monkey around with this for a second. So, okay. I just have to say, Emmy, you are a really tough act to follow, <laughs> <laughs> but we will try. The block parties were great. Um, so, in 2017 in Skokie, the village had 68 block parties. 13 of those block parties were nominated for Block Party of the Year awards, and we are here to present four, the four winners. Pardon me, Karen. Oh, I just yeah, need to Thank you. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Always technical difficulties. Oh, we're almost there. Here we go. All right. So our first. Okay. Um, our first block party of the award winner is the 7500 block of Lowell Avenue. This block party was dedicated to their neighbor, Nancy Thurkild, who passed away in May of 2017. Her neighbors invited members of Ms. Thurkild's family to join their celebration. Other special efforts included making special arrangements for another neighbor who was able to visit for the day from the rehabilitation center where she was staying after a stroke. So, there are some photos, and okay. so they are, so Lowell Avenue, 7,500 block, here is your award. Congrats. Thank you. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> so the second winner is the 5100 Black of Morse. Festivities there included a Taste of Morse dinner, a free cycling event where neighbors could share gently used items with each other, a bounce house, karaoke, a pet show, and all were encouraged to bring food pantry donations. So, 5100 Black of Morse, congratulations. Okay, our third Black Party of the Year award goes to the 8300 Black of Colmar. Their theme was Colmar Avenue Rocks. Festivities included a ribbon cutting opening ceremony, an international food potluck, a bounce house, and a bonfire for s'mores. So congratulations to the 8300 Black of Colmar. If there's someone here, yeah, to get your award. And our last, our fourth and final award goes to Drake Avenue from 9409 to 9560 Drake. Their theme was Superheroes of Drake Avenue. Festivities included face painting and Mendy, a bounce house, potluck dinner, a hired DJ. And these neighbors also sent around a questionnaire and from that created a list of quotes, what I like what I appreciate about Drake Avenue. They also created a directory of skilled services available among the various residents of the block. There we go. So Drake Avenue, superheroes of Drake Avenue. Oh, I believe we'll all be meeting in the hallway for Black Party Award winner photos. So, <laughs> let me know. Anyway, so thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Uh, why don't we take a short break, a couple minutes, um, unless everybody is, really wants to take up on the catch basin and inlet cleaning uh, bid. Uh, but take a couple minutes and give everybody a chance to gather and congratulate.
Cracker Jack box, right? Yeah, then, you know, think about my school, we get a short, I feel. Hey, hey, we need to, uh, I'm back. Okay, Trustee Ulrich. item is report of our village manager this evening our assistant manager Jason Wisher Jason thank you very much mayor uh, items a B and C of my report were all approved under tonight's consent agenda and that concludes my report <laughs> you're invited back <laughs> <laughs> next report is our co corporation council Michael Lorge thank you mayor uh, trustees good evening everyone items a B C and D on my report for this evening were approved at the beginning of this evening item E is a resolution approving a plat of subdivision for the property located at 5033 Dempster Street in Skokie which is in a B3 business district uh, Mayor, I would be requesting board action tonight on this resolution. A motion on item E, plat of subdivision for the property at 5033 Dempster in a B3 business district is in order. Trustee Klein seconded by Trustee Gray Keeler. Are there any comments or questions on the plat of subdivision? If not, I call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Sutker. Aye. Trustee Ulrich. Aye. Trustee Brumberg. Aye. Trustee Klein. Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler. Aye. Mayor Van Dusen. Aye. The motion passes. Mayor, that would conclude my report for this evening. Thank you. Next item is a matter of new business. Case number 2018-02M. Chairman Paul Luke of our Planning Commission with Peter Pyer. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, this is uh, this case comes through us through the modified review process. The uh, Community Development uh, Department received a request from the Illinois Holocaust Museum and Education Center at 9603 Woods Drive to amend Site Plan Approval Ordinance Number 16-4-Z4220 through the modified review procedure. The site plan approval ordinance was approved in 2003 for the construction of the museum and was further amended in the year 2016. Oh, okay. The museum is now proposing to create a peace garden along Woods Drive, the Woods Drive frontage of the museum building between the north and south driveways. The garden will enliven the austere area that currently contains only a few trees and gravel. A hold harmless agreement will be required for a new sidewalk that will be partly on the private property and for landscaping that will be on the parkway. The museum is also requesting relief to allow four oversized promotional banners signs to be hung from the west wall of the museum facing Woods Drive to promote museum programs. Relief from the sign chapters will be required to allow the oversized signs, number of signs, and the length of time they are displayed. The Appearance Commission reviewed and approved the garden plans and the signage at its April 18th meeting. The Commission also endorsed the appearance of the oversized banner signs as, a, as they were proportionate to the facade design. The Corporation Council, Community De Development Director, myself reviewed the request, and it was our opinion that the request <coughs> requested site and landscape plan modifications are in substantial compliance with the intent of the original site plan approval ordinance. 
The request for relief for the oversized banners is also acceptable. It is our pleasure to recommend that this request be granted. Thank you. A motion on plain case 2018-02P is in order. Trustee Sutker seconded by Trustee Bromberg. Are there any comments or questions? The petitioner is with us this evening, Trustee Sutker. Are there peace gardens and along any of the other Holocaust museums? Not quite like this. This will be Hi. Hi there. Thank you, Trustee. Um, this will be relatively unique. Stanley Tigerman's originally design, original design was very austere. And frankly, when we built it for $40 million, the budget did not allow some things that we now are considering later. But uh, this is a place where people will be able to contemplate. There will be some stands which contain sayings regarding attitudes toward peace and understanding and tolerance for people of all backgrounds. And it will be also curved. There will be some benches where people would be able to sit and reflect. We expect that some of the school groups may use it as a place to congregate either before or after their visits to the museum. Right now, we don't really, we're not set up for that yet. So this is unique then for the other, as, um, from the other museums? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Trustee Roberts. Well, I think it looks stunning, very beautiful. So I appreciate your efforts to beautify the area. The firm that handles the Baha'i Temple in Wilmette was hired to lay this out. And fortunately, we had a very generous donor who felt strongly that the presence on Woods Drive was simply not uh, impressive enough. And so, you know, even though the front of the museum, which faces east toward Jerusalem, faces the Eden's Highway, we will now have a very welcoming, uh, but not frivolous. I mean, we don't want to have all different colors of flowers, but it's going to be peaceful. Beautiful design. Thank you. Thank you. I'll call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts. Aye. Trustee Sutker. Aye. Trustee Ulrich. Aye. Trustee Bromberg. Aye. Trustee Klein. Aye. Trustee Greg Keeler. Aye. Mayor Van Dusen. Aye. The motion passes. Congratulations and thank, thank you. you. And we're grateful, as always, for the support of the village. It's going to be a beautiful project. Thank you. Uh, next item are six planned commission cases. Uh, I, the way we'll proceed, I think, just because it's such a complicated case, is uh, the chairman of the planned commission will give a brief overview. Uh, and if anybody would like to speak to the case, we would be happy to hear them at that point. And then we would proceed item by item, uh, and the chairman will then give a brief description of each of the subsequent cases. So, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mayor. <coughs> uh, for the record, cases are case numbers 2017-52P, 53P, 54P, 55P, 56P, and 57P. In case uh, 2017-52P, the zoning map uh, amendment at 92 on the Skokie Boulevard, is a request to amend the zoning map chapter to change the zoning district for 9200 Skokie Boulevard from a B1 service commercial to a B3 business. The petitioners desire to rezone the subject site, which present <coughs> presently contains a vacant funeral home and a surface parking lot in the B3 in order to develop, to redevelop the property. A car wash and gas station are not allowed to be one, and therefore the B3 zoning is more appropriate based on the site location and surrounding areas. Um, I failed to mention that the petitioner in this case is the Waterway Gas and Wash Company. 
Uh, in case in case 2017-53 P subdivision at 9200 Skokie Boulevard is a request to resubdivide four existing lots into one new lot at 9200 Skokie Boulevard in a B3 business district. The subdivision will include a five foot wide right of way dedication along Gross Point Road in order to widen the existing public sidewalk. An additional three foot wide strip of land along the north side of Church Street is being dedicated in order to place the new multi-use path that will run along the north side of Church entirely within the right of way. In case 2017-54P site plan approval is a request for a site plan approval for a one lot plan development in the B3 district that includes an automotive fuel, <coughs> automotive fuel station, convenience store, car wash, surface parking, and stormwater detention. Uh, four items will be needed for relief uh, in order to implement the proposed signage. Um, these items are, uh, of sign relief were reviewed and approved by the Appearance Commission. In case 2017-55P, special use permit at 9208 Skokie Boulevard for a special use for an automotive fueling station in the B3 business district. A special use is required due to the potential impact of automotive fuel station may have on the surrounding area. The facility will be a six pump gas station with a convenience store. Access to the station will be primarily from Skokie Boulevard, a right in and right out single driveway. Secondary access will be provided from Gross Point Road. The anticipated fuel station hours of operation is 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Waterway will be selling its own private label fuel with deliveries taking place from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. or 8 to 10 p.m. A tenant will be stationed under the canopy for anyone needing assistance. Case 2017-50C is a parking determination uh, of which the plan commission was a final uh, hearing body and does not require a vote from the board. Plan Commission Case 2017-57P, Special Use Permit, is a request for a car wash. The car wash entity entry is on the east side of the building and stacking goes around the gas island to get to the car wash and tunnel entrance. The drying blowers are located at the west end of the tunnel and face the 7-Eleven store and not towards residential properties. In the past, Skokie conducted a car wash noise study and the noise of the blowers is lost in the background traffic. Car detailing will not be offered at this location so cars will not be left on site to be picked up later. The proposed use is a machine wash and not a hand car wash with typically four cars in the tunnel at one time. The conveyor speed will be controlled. Hours operation will be from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. for the car wash. The number of employees varies depending on the, on the season and weather. There are up to 26 spaces available for, in the car wash queue and 14 vehicles stacking prior to the car, wa car wash without obstructing the on-site circulation. The plan Commission concurred with staff and recommendations to approve each of these cases. Thank you. Is there anybody who wishes to speak on this project? Uh, if there is, you're welcome to take the microphone and address the board. Otherwise, uh, we'll go through uh, on the agenda A, Plan Commission Case 2017-52P, Zoning Map Amendment. A motion would be in order. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Didn't good. See you sneak oh, up there. I, I'm, I'm sneaky that way. I'm Mike Goldman. I'm Vice President and General Counsel of Waterway <laughs> Gas and Wash, and I usually get paid by the word, but I'm going to fight that one tonight. Mm -hmm. Just if there are any questions, I, I know we've had a really great opportunity with uh, um, with uh, architecture review, our, our appearance review, and plan commission to go through our plan. But if there are any questions that I can answer from any trustees, uh, I'm certainly happy to, and, and really looking forward and excited to be a part of the Skokie community. Sure. Uh, as, if you don't mind staying there, as we go through each of the items, um, I'll ask members of the board if they wish to ask questions. So uh, the first one is the zoning map amendment motion would be in order. 
Trustee Robert, seconded by Trustee Klein. Are there any questions on the zoning map amendment? If not, uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Albert? Aye. Trustee Bremberg? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Trustee Greg Keeler? Aye. Mayor Van Dusen? Aye. The motion passes. Plan Commission Case 2017-53P, subdivision at 9200 Skokie Boulevard. Motion is in order. Trustee Greg Keeler, seconded by Trustee Bromberg. Are there any comments or questions on the subdivision? If not, I'll call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Albert? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Trustee Greg Keeler? Aye. Mayor Van Dusen? Aye. The motion passes. C, Plan Commission Case 2017-54P, Site Plan Approval. Motion is in order. Trustee Ulrich seconded by Trustee Roberts. Are there any comments or questions? Trustee Roberts. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to ask Waterway, uh, uh, I was reading you've been in business for about 50 years? Yes, uh, we opened our first location in 1970. Okay, and how many car washes do you? We have 20 currently. Okay, Yeah. and in the Chicago metro area, your first was in? First was in North Brooks. Brooks. This will be our second uh, in the Chicagoland area, but we started in St. Louis, then Kansas City, Denver, Cleveland, and, and now now we're, we're, we finally are taking on the big challenge and we're up here in Chicago. Okay, and uh, in terms of the queuing for the lines, you've been in the business for a while. Is this a typical number of cars that you've accommodated for this site? Or is, are there rules of thumb in your business that uh, where you provide a certain, at a certain point, people get discouraged and probably go away, right? But what do you provide and what's the standard in the industry? So the standard for us is about half of what we're showing here. Uh, typically, uh, 10 is more than enough. We do things a little differently than some traditional car washes. We don't do any prepping at the front of uh, the car wash. We don't do the, the vacuuming, which is really what causes the problem when the queue, when you see these cars backing up, it's because they're doing vacuuming or other kind of prepping. We don't do anything. We get the car straight on the um, conveyor and then we have all those spaces here at the end, those finishing spaces, and that's where we can really manage our, our employees and parallel process and really uh, d take care of all the details. So this is a huge amount of queuing for us. I would say it is the most that we have in the company, but it's also because this is sort of an odd shaped site that was not done in a, oh my gosh, we're, we're worried. It was done, in, it's, a, it's a strangely shaped site. but. Obviously, we appreciate all the queue. And this is a question for maybe Peter and Paul, but uh, I understand is somewhere I read is the Shell station. In other words, we're not going to have any more additional gasoline services, really, because is the Shell station closing in that area? Yes, or? the Shell station mm -hmm. currently has a sign announcing their closure and actually they're moving. So for people that are used to getting gas in that area, like myself, it's it would be good to have a gas station nearby. Yes. Okay. Trustee Klein. Yeah, I just want to ask about the hours of the convenience store. Yes. What do you got? Uh, the convenience store would be open the full hours that we are open for gas. So I believe what we agreed to is 6 in the morning until 11 at night. Um, but it, we don't sell alcohol. Uh, and it's a, it's always a, we always have at least two employees working inside there. And it's, it's not a, a, what I would call a destination convenience store. People, they might come because they're on site, but we rarely draw them in for that. But we do want to stay open for those gasoline customers who want to buy, uh, get a drink or um, uh, we sell a lot of greeting cards and that's what we, we sell a lot of those to in the evening. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Trustee Sucker. Yeah, I was going to ask about what you sell in the convenience store as well, like lottery tickets, those kind of things too. So we do sell lottery tickets at about half of our convenience stores. Um, I do not know right now if we're planning on selling lottery, though we do up in Northbrook, and that's been pretty popular up there, so I'm <coughs> guessing we will. 
our array is a little different than the traditional convenience store. Uh, you can absolutely get a bag of Fritos and a Diet Coke there if you so choose. Um, but we also sell, uh, for instance, up in the Northbrook store, we always try to get local products. So there's Highland Pop, which is a local popcorn company. We sell a whole lot of that. Um, we sell uh, um, a, a lot of pet supplies. We have our own uh, brand of pet supplies because people won't believe how many people like to bring their dogs to the car wash. So we sell toys and bones and all that kind of stuff. The greeting cards that we sell is the only thing I would say we are truly famous for in our store because we are the only uh, company in really that, that Papyrus will allow to sell their brand and line of cards inside of a convenience store. We are unique in that and it's because our store isn't going to look like a regular convenience store. It's going to look like a boutique. It's, it's, a, it's a very... Um, highly stylized highly designed we don't pack things in we don't block windows for sure um, so you can get the basics but we like to surprise people with some of the neat things where is your place in Northbrook it's right at Willow and Waukegan at Willow Festival okay. it's it's an out lot right up the street yeah thank you thanks uh, call the roll please Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Ulrich? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Trustee Greg Keeler? Aye. Mayor Van Dusen? Aye. The motion passes. Next item is case number 2017-55P, special use permit automotive fuel station. Motion is in order. Trustee Ulrich seconded by Trustee Roberts. Are there any comments or questions on item D? Uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Albert? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Trustee Greg Keeler? Aye. Mayor Van Dusen? Aye. The motion passes. And finally, Plan Commission Case 2017-57P, Special Use Permit Car Wash. Motion is in order. Trustee Gray Keeler, seconded by Trustee Roberts. Are there any questions or comments on item E? Trustee Roberts. I just, uh, in terms of Skokie Boulevard, uh, Peter, I think you were showing there will be no left turn going northbound, right? That's right. So only, uh, so if you were going north, you could turn on to church and then come over to Gross Point right. and enter, right. enter that way. But uh, on Skokie Boulevard, only southbound. Yes, and there's a median here that you cannot cross. And I understand there was a traffic study that showed maybe a 2% increase in traffic. Is that what the plan commission? Yes, it was, it was minor. They were saying a maximum of 2%. Okay. Uh, call the roll, please. Trustee Roberts? Aye. Trustee Sutker? Aye. Trustee Albert? Aye. Trustee Bromberg? Aye. Trustee Klein? Aye. Trustee Gray Keeler? Aye. Mayor Van Dusen? Aye. The motion passes. And concluding this evening. Congratulations. Congratulations, Thank Mr. You all Golden. Very much. Welcome. Thanks. We're looking forward to it. We are too. Uh, my, my next case for the evening is case 2018 08 special use permit at 7855 Gross Point Road, Unit G5. The Plan Commission heard a request of 7855 property owner LLC on behalf of Jesco Joseph and Saju Chakapan, Kapapan for a special use permit for automotive rental in an M1 office assembly in the industrial district. The A1 van rentals, which is presently operating in Niles intends to open a second location in a 738 foot square foot office at 7855 Gross Point Road, Unit G5. The business will have two vans available for rental at the Skokie location. The owner of the business indicates that he will be using the space only for the office with a computer, printer, and one part-time employee and we will be strictly using, uh, they will be strictly using two spots for a van parking and two spots for personal car parking. Most of the time, all vans will be 
on rental on out on rental so usually we don't they don't take that much space according to the petitioner plan commission concurred with staff's recommendation to grant the special use request petitioner i believe is in the audience and is available for questioning a uh, motion on plan commission case 2018-08p special use permit for 7855 gross point road is in order trustee klein seconded by gray keeler any comments or questions being none uh call the roll please trustee roberts aye trustee sucker aye trustee albert aye trustee bromberg aye trustee klein aye trustee gray keeler aye and mayor van dusen aye the motion passes that concludes my report thank you thank you uh please give the plan commission our thanks that mm -hmm. was a very long and a lot of work um, yeah. on the uh, car wash yeah. thank you congratulations uh, the concluding item this evening is citizen comments is there anybody who wishes to address the board I, I do. okay if I you would take right just take the microphone please and for the record, uh, please give us your names and uh, addresses. Thank you. Hi, thank you for giving me an opportunity to comment tonight. Um, some of you know me because I am Niles Township trustee, Bonnie Khan Agnesani, but I am also a Skokie resident at 5328 Arcadia Street. And um, this is my friend and neighbor. I'm yourself. Stephanie Geisler, and I'm at 5230 um, Suffield Terrace. I forgot my address. I just moved in. <laughs> yeah, she did. Um, and I'm here tonight to advocate for a plastic bag ban in Skokie. And I just have a few remarks. Um, plastic bags never truly degrade. Instead, the plastic breaks down into tiny pieces that end up consumed by wildlife, um, and leached into our waterways as harmful chemicals like BPA. According to the Alliance for the Great Lakes, 89% of litter found on the shores of Lake Michigan comes from plastic. Further, plastic bags make, made from non-renewable fossil fuel-based resources are not easy to recycle. Only about 5% of plastic bags are ever recycled. Um, and the United Nations Environmental Program Secretariat has, recommend, has recommended a ban on all plastic bags globally. The Village of Skokie has the opportunity to build on its reputation as a leader in green cities and ban plastic bags. I urge you to take that leadership role and show your residents as well as neighboring municipalities that Skokie values the health and well-being of its citizens and our shared environment through supporting and advocating for a ban on plastic bags. Thank you. Thank you. Could we get a copy of your remarks? They're written in my pen, like just, <laughs> I'll let you see it, and then okay. if you want, I can send it to you. Yeah, if you could just send it to us, you. that'd be fine. <laughs> No, no, if your penmanship is like mine, um, it's terrible. Trustee like Roberts. Notes in the margins. You know, I, I, just, I just wanted to add that I, um, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but the newest edition of National Geographic magazine, I just read the, it. almost the entire edition is devoted to uh, plastics and its impact on the environment. So I very much appreciate your um, your comments, and uh, I'm going to share that with the, the Skokie's uh, Sustainable Environment Advisory Commission, which I'm the liaison. So oh, I, uh, I think that they'll be very interested in working on this for on behalf of Skokie. Thank you, and I'd be happy to send you information and other articles as well. Great. Okay, thank, thank you. you very thank you much. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Also, thank you for letting my girls go. <laughs> <laughs> they were great. <laughs> Love their enthusiasm. Uh, motion to adjourn. Mayor. Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. I didn't see you there. I'm sorry. Hi. I'm Rebecca Abraham. I live at 7906 Lowell Avenue. 
I'm also um, coming up for a public comment today to also request a ban on not only plastic bags, but all single-use plastics, including drinking straws and stirrers. Um, I echo exactly what Bonnie said. I also have some studies citing the public health risk from the University of Michigan School of Public Health. Um, plastics take a very long time to biodegrade. Only 9% of them are recyclable. There's also a study saying 5% are recyclable, which is much worse than 9%. Um, some of the public health concerns with the BPA that comes from the plastic is um, there could be harm to neurological development in babies. Uh, there is studies showing that babies exposed to a high level of BPA can end up with long NICU stays. And there's also some concern about uh, reproductive health in women who are exposed to a high level of BPA that come from the single-use plastics. So I'm requesting um, a ban um, or a taxation on all single-use plastics this is recently done by the state of California a year ago. And recently, locally, Oak Park just voted to ban single-use plastics. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to address the board? I don't want to make that mistake again. <laughs> I apologize. Motion to adjourn, Trustee Bromberg. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. We are adjourned.